Well, now Deputy Ruth Coppinger sharing time with Deputy Boyd Barrett. Thank you, Ken Corla. Um, I think people at home will be amazed at some of the goings on in this chamber. At a time when rents are increasing exorbitantly, the figures have already been given. That Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael in particular want us all to sit and wait for their uh, private uh, residential uh, bill that they've been talking about for a long time before we should take any action. Th this bill, by the way, has been asked for by community associations, by trade unions. It's been signed by a whole number of TDs <coughs> on that basis. Uh, in, in a survey that I've done of 60 cases that I have in the anti austerity lines in Dublin West have in our books, this bill will cover 61% of the reasons why people become homeless. Um, it, will, it covers the issue of rent increases, which in a survey I found to be 19% uh, of cases. Uh, the biggest reason why people are becoming homeless now, and it's why I'll be bringing forward with the anti austerity lines and anti eviction bill, is the landlord coming and saying that they have to sell the property. In my, in my figures, it's 31% of the cases. The other thing for the other shyster landlords who are, chance, who, who, who are chancing their arm is that they have to move in a family member. That's 12% of reasons for evictions now. So the government seems to think that this bill isn't necessary. Uh, quite incredible. Now, all of the figures have been given for rent increases. They're out of control. And yet you've set your face and the new argument is that it's unconstitutional. Now, I keep hearing about the Housing Committee that I, I'd say I put as much work into that as probably anyone else who was on it. We were all told to put our shoulders to the wheel. We come up with solutions. I haven't seen any of them actually adopted, by the way. And one of the speakers who came into the Housing Committee was Edmund Honan, who made it clear, chapter and verse, that there is no constitutional impediment to rent controls or rent certainty. Absolutely none. In the testimony he gave, he said the notion of public interest is extensive. The legislator's judgment as to what's in the public interest is primary. He went on to say when the part fives were being introduced, that it was made clear by the Supreme Court that the achievement of these objectives would be socially just re required by the common good, and the common good speaks volumes. So please do not be using that as an excuse when people are being rack rented into poverty in this state. Now the other reason, and my heart was bleeding as I listened to it, was that these poor landlords will exit the sector, leaving everyone bereft of supply. Can we nail this myth once and for all with actual figures from the RTB itself? Okay, so I'm going to give you the figures for landlords. In 2011, there was 151,034 landlords in quarter one. In 2016, there was 173,956 landlords. A massive jump. Why would landlords be leaving the sector? It's a bonanza for them. You won't bring the rent controls. They can charge what they want, and they have a huge power to just find all sorts of ways to get rid of a tenant as well. Why would they leave the sector? Please pull the other one. Please don't use this ridiculous excuse, and Fianna Fáil as well, beneath contempt, you know, posing as the opposition, and you're telling us that you won't support rent certainty, which you supported, by the way, in the Housing Committee, but when you're let out into the wider and you get under the party whip, it's a different story. So, um, Cahir, look, this is just beyond belief, that the landlords, who we know have a huge investment in this doll, I think 20 to 25 per cent of TDs. I await the member's interest being published in January, but it was 20 per cent at least. The minister himself and the junior minister are landlords. Is that the reason that they're afraid to take any effective action? I wonder.